Yeah, it was a tale of two halves when we didn't play very well in the first half and turned the ball over too much and, and gave them momentum and gave them the lead. And, and uh, we put ourselves in a, in a huge deficit. And, and second half, our guys really fought to try to get back into the game. And, and um, you know, that's it. You know, I think if we if we take care of the ball like we did in the second half, I think it's a different ball game. So uh, we got to get back to the drawing board. Um, we have a really good team. And um, we need to play like that team that, that showed up in the second half. Was it a, a lack of aggressiveness on your part trying to keep the press there in the first half, or what, were you guys doing something not correct against that that was long enough to, to get an energy? Yeah, you know, I think it's it's not having seen you know a, a press like that, but also I think that we had, you know, we had the right scheme in place, um, but I think it was maybe some nerves, you know, that you could you could point to. Um, but yeah, I got to I got to do a better job of, of putting our guys in position um, to to help them. Get through, you know, that stretch where we started turning the ball over and giving them momentum. Um, and then in the first half, I think, you know, just defensively, we, we messed up, messed up on some coverages that uh, normally our guys are getting down. And you saw that in the second second half a little bit, especially late, that we didn't mess up on those coverages. And you saw the difference late in the second half. Without uh, one of your better ball handlers today, Jordan, was that a factor as well in handling that press? Well, I think one of the factors was was uh, Melo going out with two fouls in the first half. Um, and I think that was, because he was playing, I think that really, really hurt us. And, and you saw in the second half, he really you know, controlled tempo a little bit and helped us out in that area. Can, uh, can you share what was going on with Jordan and Safari today and their injuries? Yeah, just from their game against North Dakota, um, you know, I think one, Jordan suffered a, a hip flexor and, um, and Tafari suffered a little groin injury that hopefully they can so they're still waiting on MRIs and, and all that. Wait, was Samba an ankle? Right? He, it was a cramp. Oh, yeah, he, he ended up cramping gotcha. late, so um, that's why he was out. Gotcha. Patrick, were, were they um, doing anything that you maybe didn't expect uh, defensively in the first half against you, or do you feel like maybe you weren't aggressive enough offensively? Well, how would you kind of break down that first half? Yeah, so I think the first half, I mean, as a team, they threw a lot of different shots at us. They threw a 2-2-1 two -two zone. They threw a man trap zone. They threw a straight-up man zone. So, I mean, just coming to that game and adjusting to that part was different. Um, but then for the most part, you saw a couple times one dribble, it's a double in the post. and I mean, just different things that they were doing that I felt um, probably forced a lot of us in uncomfortable situations where they were denying balls. And, really forcing us to pretty much play one-on-one, -on -one, which is something that we didn't want to do coming into this game. Pat, um, with Josh in particular, his, his strength obviously is getting to the basket, puts his head down and goes, and he's 10 of 12 from the floor. How, how did he kind of help right the ship for you guys, especially offensively? Well, Josh is a natural attacker off the dribble, and in this type of game, you know, his his style of play and the way he is, is going, he's going to you know, have those opportunities and he was able to you know, finish a lot of those plays in the paint. And uh, you know, Josh is extremely valuable to our team, especially in a game like this, you know, where you need extra ball handling, you need extra attackers, and, and uh, he's aggressive too, so you know, it, it played well into, into how he plays. Josh, did it feel good getting out there today and playing the way you did? Um, no, I'm 100% uh, sore losing. That's how I feel. Like I didn't do enough for my team, didn't do enough. I caught the ball and he puts us. We couldn't get more prepared. We had everything set up for what we were supposed to do as a team. We gotta get better and we gotta execute. Coach, you only took two free throws in the first half. Was that a priority at halftime? Well, priority was aggressiveness. And I think as you're more aggressive, you shoot more free throws. Um, and, um, you know, listen, we only shot nine free throws for the game. I'm not going to get into whether there were some fouls or not that should have been called. But uh, yeah, I mean, we, we need to be more aggressive. We need to get to the paint a little bit more. And, and we need to be a little bit more forceful as well to, to get to the free throw line. We, we proved that and showed that against North Dakota. So for both of you guys, um, obviously the next game coming up is a big one at Florida, a really good opponent. You excited about that? How do you, how do you view that challenge? Yeah, I mean, I'm always excited to take the court against a really good opponent in the SEC. Um, we know they got some size. We know they have 
have high major caliber type players. So, I mean, it's coming in this week. I feel like we got to have more confidence and just in practice compete and really listen to scout and really hone in on stuff. So, I mean, I think overall this is a big week for us to lock in. Um, yeah, just to piggyback off Pat, I think it's a um, really huge week for us in practice. Um, I know growing up, I used to always dream about like playing in the ACC or playing against a team like that. So I know it's going to be a, game, a dream come true for a bunch of guys on our team, but we got to still remain focused and know that we come in to win the game, not just go out there and play. How big of a factor was the, was the crowd for you guys tonight? I think that was the biggest crowd since 2014. Uh, a ton of students there. The, the, obviously, you want to win the game, but did that? Did you feel like that played a role a little bit in your comeback in the second half? I, yeah, I could say um, that worked with us both ways. Um, I think in the first half, you saw how, I mean, it being the first time we were playing in front of our big home crowd, and it it kind of threw us off a little bit, and we're just adjusting. And then the second half, you could see when we started playing well, they started getting behind us, we started feeding off of their energy. So I think it was twofold and a tale of two halves. And, I mean, we just love playing in front of big crowds. Josh, did you want to take that one too? Um, yeah, for me, I thought it was amazing. Um, for me, this is my third year being at Milwaukee. Last season, we had a COVID season, so no fans was in the stands. So this is my first time seeing the building um, this packed. So I'm just a little upset that we let the, those fans down, but it was amazing. I hope we could do this every game. Any more questions for Coach or for Patrick or for JT? Uh, Last one. Coach, uh, how important is it for you to get everyone involved? Because you guys only had like three three people that scored like big numbers. How important is it to get everyone involved from the start? Well, you know, I, I think it's very important to get uh, everyone involved, but also it's very important to be aggressive when those opportunities come. Um, you know, I didn't call a single play for Josh, and it's not about whether or not you know we're we're getting them involved. Um, he just went out and go made. Excuse me, he went out and, and made plays. In a game like this, you just got to go make plays. Yeah, we want everybody involved. We want Joy to you know, finish at the basket. We want you know, Melo making a three. Jason comes in, and, and I think he had two threes or three threes that we want him to make. You know, it's really important. And if you get that type of contribution, you're going to win if you get multiple guys involved. Um, if your main guys are, are clicking and playing well, you need those complimentary guys to, you know, towards the tail end. If you look at their, you know, their you know, their stats, you know, they had guys off the bench who had eight and six and 10 and nine off the bench. If you get contribution like that, that's going to be, that's going to go well for you. So, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll look at, we'll look at film, we'll watch all that stuff, and, and we'll see how we can get other guys uh, more aggressive in taking their opportunities when they're there. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you.